The sun, we see it every day, but we know surprisingly little about it. One thing that regularly freaks me out, for example, is that we know from observations on other stars similar to our sun that they usually make many more super flares that, if strong enough, can rip the atmosphere off a planet. Today I have a very interesting paper by a group which says they figured out where the solar cycles come from and that it's not a coincidence our sun has so few super flares. I want this to be true so I can sleep better at night. Let's have a look. The sun has a cycle of approximately 11 years in which its activity goes up and down. At the peak of each cycle, the magnetic poles change polarity. They swap, basically. The current phase is called the solar maximum and it goes along with an increase in the frequency of sunspots and solar flares. The sun is also a little brighter during the solar maximum, which means it emits a little more energy. Yes, this does have a small effect on the temperature of Earth, but no, it's not where global warming comes from. A shame because if it were we could just write the sun a stern letter. There are a lot of models for why the sun has this 11 year cycle but none of them quite fit the data. The difficulty is it's not just this one cycle because the solar minima and maxima are not totally regular. There are longer cycles overlaid. And where do these come from? Well this is where the new study comes in. These physicists say that the sun cycles are strong strongly influenced by the orbits of the planets. The planets, especially the heaviest and closest ones, notch on the sun a little bit here and there. And this, they say, fits the solar cycle. They have developed a model which they claim fits the observations. They also say that this explains why our sun has so few super flares. Because the planets move on regardless of what the sun's plasma does. This has a damping effect on the maximum activity. Activity. This is the reason why they say our sun has 10 to 100 times fewer super flares than comparable suns. Basically, the big planets are protecting us. I must warn you though that this idea is highly controversial. Most people who work on solar physics think that the influence of the planets is far too small to have such an effect. Personally, I'm not so sure, because it's a chaotic system and even small nudges can have a big impact. This makes me wonder whether this is a situation similar to the dismissal of plate tectonics a century ago. The idea that the big planets, especially Jupiter, protect Earth regularly surfaces on social media. It gained traction in 1994 after a comet called Shoemaker-Levy 9 broke apart and slumped into Jupiter. This was a vivid demonstration of how Jupiter, with its strong gravitational pull, can clean the solar system from big rocks that might otherwise slam into Earth. That big Jupiter protects us in some sense is appealing because I guess it's a kind of heartwarming story. The truth is more complicated. Models suggest that while Jupiter and Saturn too help us by slinging some comets that come from the Oort cloud out of the solar system before they can reach us, they also perturb the orbits of asteroids in a way that can nudge them towards us. Some simulations have found that without Jupiter we'd actually see fewer asteroid impacts on Earth. That said, we do have a good friend nearby, which is the Moon. In the early days of our Earth, the Moon hadn't cooled out and still had a magnetic field from the motion of its molten core. Its magnetic field would have been connected with that of Earth, much strengthening our protection against particles in the solar wind. This may have helped Earth retain its early atmosphere and was likely beneficial to the evolution of life on Earth. The Moon has also helped to stabilize the tilt of Earth's axis. This axis isn't perpendicular to the plane in which we orbit but has an angle of about 23.5 degrees relative to it. This angle is the reason why we have seasons on Earth. The Moon's gravitational pull has kept this axis and the seasons quite steady. This is unlike, for example, seasons on Mars, where the tilt varies substantially year after year, which is much harder for ecosystems to cope. And also explains why the tourism industry on Mars is struggling. If the planets really are keeping us safe, we should probably say thank you.
or at least stop sending probes to photograph them naked. I used to get a lot of scam calls. I found out that this happened because my phone number had leaked from some websites I must have once signed up to. I now have a new phone number and I'm signed up to Incogni to prevent that from happening again. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed, but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners, request that your personal details be removed, and they'll keep on doing that. And if you want, send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like within a minute, basically. It's really solved a problem for me, and maybe it'll help you too. If you use our link Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.